Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spinning Back Creek, where each week on MMA Junkie, we take you on a quick spin through the week's news. And joining me this week are the two OGs of MMA Junkie Radio, Gorgeous George and Goes, and repping the East Coast of the USA is Mr. Danny Segura, checking in with plenty of Columbia and Atletico Madrid memorabilia behind him, uh, repping, repping the football back there. But this is MMA and the big story of the weekend, guys. We can't go anywhere without talking about the big story of UFC 254 Saturday night. Khabib Nurmagomedov announcing his immediate retirement after his victory over Justin Gaethje on Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. We've got to kick off with this one, guys. I'd love to know what was your immediate reaction when you found out that he was actually retiring? And do you think he's going to actually stay retired or is he going to be like so many other fighters we've seen down the years and be lured back for one or two more? We'll put three minutes on the clock to get started. And George, you can lead us off. You know, it's as simple as this, guys. I was shocked, but then I wasn't. Because as soon as he started to take off the gloves, I knew what was coming. It kind of reminded me of what we went through with Henry Cejudo. Had Henry not done that, then maybe I'd be like, what are you doing, you know? But yeah, I think a lot of these athletes, it's just, you know, they're reaching this point, this crest in their careers. They've made some money, and maybe they just, it could be pressure. It could be different reasons. But for Habib, we know it's a different reason. He didn't want to go in there without his father. It's something that him and him and uh, his father did together, uh, Abdul Manap, uh, for many years. And the, it just felt different to him. He wanted to keep his commitment to the UFC. He promised his mom this would be the last one. So he went in there and battled like a, the warrior that he is. But uh, I, I think he can't. I've just seen too much of this, guys. I mean, that, this is where my age comes in handy. I've seen too much of it. Superstars in many sports, they'll eventually come back. So the safe answer is yes. I think it'll be the Irishman that pulls him back. Yeah, I mean, he's managed by uh, Ali Abdelaziz and uh, one of his other clients goes. Uh, Henry Cejudo retired recently. He sounded very genuine at the time. He's making a lot of noises about coming back as well. Do we think we're going to start to see noises like that from Khabib or is he is he really done? I think if we do hear that, it's going to be some time before we get to that. I mean, all of his reasonings for doing this all make sense to me. And as far as it being the perfect time, I don't because he's in his prime and what's crazy is every fight he seems to even be more you know better at what he's doing he's improved so there are a couple fights out there that i think could actually help him in cementing what he wants to leave behind but right now i firmly believe that in his mind he believes that he's going to be retired now we all see what these fighters have within them that bravado and i think after a while that's going to come out and it's going to lure him to come back to the UFC because this is the lifestyle for him. You know, it's not a job. He loves what he does. Yeah, Danny, I mean, these guys are competitors, right? They live to get in the cage and fight. And a lot of them find it really hard to walk away. Do you think he's going to have that problem? He's quite a private person. Do you think he can step himself away from the cage forever? I, I don't have as much time as covering mixed martial arts as uh, George and goes, but if you just stick around for one year, you'll see many people retire and then eventually come back. So I actually, you know, distrust MMA retirement. So I can't say for certain that he will stay retired, but I will say that Habib just seems to be a different fighter. He operates by a different set of rules. We know he doesn't really care that much about money and he's already made a good amount of money. So if there's anybody, anybody in mixed martial arts that I'm going to believe on retirement, that's going to be Khabib Nurmagomedov. So I do think he'll stay retired. I don't think he'll come back to mixed martial arts. However, I do think that because of, of it, the passing of, of his father and he hasn't had too much time to process that, you know, that could potentially um, be a thing down the line if he's able to sort of process that and, and, and sort of rethink his career and maybe get that itch to come back. But I think Khabib will stick to his guns and, and stay retired. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how all that pans out. But... On the basis of him walking away, he does it with an undefeated record, 29-0 overall, 13-0 in the UFC. And he'll go down in history as one of the sport's all-time greats. But what I want to know from you guys is where do you guys individually assess Khabib's overall legacy now that he's fought in the octagon for the final time? And where do you place him in your personal rankings of the greatest of all time? We'll put another three minutes on the clock for this one. And goes, you can go first. It's a very tough question because a lot of people look at it differently. You know, some fighters bring up if you're, if you're going to add what goes on with USADA, then that's going to automatically eliminate a couple guys, right? That would leave uh, George St. Pierre and Habib in my mind. And when you really put them together, 
it's very, very close. But the, the big thing for me is probably title defenses. Um, Habib, I just wish would have a couple more. And the, the thing that sucks about this whole situation is you right now for me, I'm going to say GSP is still the GOAT. But I know that Khabib would have eventually overtaken him, probably maybe even with the next fight. Everybody he fights, they're all future Hall of Famers. He dishes of them, he finishes them all. Um, it's very hard to argue. I'm not saying anybody's wrong or right. It's very close, but to me, I think he fell just a little bit short. Danny, how do you how do you go about ranking greatest of all time across so many different eras, so many different weight classes? It's really tough to do, isn't it? Yeah, it's extremely difficult. I think something that we can uh, sort of rest easy about is that Khabib Nurmagomedov, there's no doubt in my mind, and there shouldn't be any doubt in anybody else's mind, that he is the greatest lightweight to have ever competed in the sport and the UFC. And that in itself is huge, obviously, lightweight being an extremely, extremely difficult weight class. But beyond that, when we're talking about the pound for pound, there's no doubt that he's on that conversation. But I have to agree with Goes. I think GSP does it for me. He just had a way many more uh, title defenses, also challenged a weight class above and was successful there and won another title. Two things that Khabib wasn't able to do throughout his run. And also GSP fought throughout generations. He beat the generations that were it, sort of previous um, before him, also during his time and also afterwards, something Khabib also wasn't able to do because he just didn't stick that uh, long in, in the sport. So uh, for me, GSP is still the GOAT, but uh, you can't argue if, if somebody wants to make an argument for Khabib because he certainly deserves it. Do you want to make an argument, George? Who do you who do you have at the top of your list and where does, where does Khabib fit in? I just can't. The guys nailed it. They covered everything and they did it perfectly. The only thing I can add to it is, you know, Title defenses do mean a lot that, you know, when you look at the list of the goats like Anderson and Jones and GSP and Aldo and Amanda, you know, it's those title defenses. Those are the toughest fights out there. Now, imagine how tough it is to just get there. You see these fighters collapse and cry and and go to the grave site of those that mentored them. Like we recently saw that with Davis and figure out imagine having to do that when everyone's now chasing you and giving you their best effort. So that is GSP having nine uh of those title defenses and being a champion in another weight, weight class with habib because he was finishing a lot of those athletes like goes mentioned a lot of them interim champs you know uh he probably didn't need to reach nine he probably needed to reach a couple more and i think he could have taken gsp but it's it's gsp i guess it's unanimous here yeah and i've i weighed in on this on uh, mma junkies triple takes so you can check that out on the mma junkie website spoiler alert it isn't gsp so uh, we will talk about that, I'm sure, at another at another date. But with Khabib now out of the picture, guys, at 155 pounds, it now begs the question of what on earth is going to happen next in the UFC's lightweight division. It is arguably the most stat weight class in the UFC with a whole host of contenders jockeying for position at that to get a shot at that vacant lightweight title. So imagine the UFC have given you a job and said, right, it is your task to work out what the hell is going to go on in this 155 pound division, you're going to reboot the division and give us a new champion. How'd you go about it? Danny, you get first crack. So I saw Three after Khabib's announcement that he was going to walk away from the sport, be quite sad. And I certainly didn't feel all that well after Khabib retired, but there is one positive, And we saw it at Bantamweight not so long ago when Henry Cejudo left. It's going to turn into a bloodbath because Habib retiring just gives everyone who already lost to Habib a second shot at potentially becoming champion. And on top of that, the whole hierarchy of who probably deserved the title and then the following and, and, and so on and so forth, that all that all that gets disrupted by Habib's absence. So we're going to see an absolute bloodbath, a lot of people angling to become a champion and to establish themselves as the next mm -hmm. contender. So I think the lightweight division is going to be very, very interesting in the coming months. I'll say this. We already got a pretty big fight book for January 23rd. Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier rematch. Why not make that for the vacant title? And on that same card, in the coming event, you throw in there Tony Ferguson versus Michael Chandler. And then you got yourself a next title challenger. So I think this is pretty simple to solve. And I think, uh, we, you know, we want to get this division rolling as, as fast as possible. So January 23rd sounds like a good start. Yeah, there's so much talent in that division. I mean, Gaethje's going to want a bite of that cherry as well. Charles Oliveira wants to get in there as well. George, what do you reckon? Yeah, well, uh, I, I, you know, I know the UFC is going to be against this because they just don't like tournaments. I don't know why. They started with tournaments in, in the early ages, 
but there really is something to attaching a promotion or a sports league with a nice sponsor and, and, and giving it a fancy name. The NCAA March Madness Tournament, the UEFA Champions League, you know, and then when it's quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, it even sounds better. Same thing, UFC, some sort of a Grand Prix. You got the depth in this division. You got the names in this division. Do it. 16, 8, 12 with a bye, you know, 8, 4, whatever it is, but do something like that. Give the fans something fresh in this uh, pandemic era, you know, something something that's different. We're not saying do it going forward. Just do it this time. And those names that, that were mentioned already, throw in Dan Hooker, throw in Gagey, throw in uh, Islam Makashev. There's a lot of them. I'm telling you, you can go really deep on this one. 16-man tournament, be still my beating heart. That would be incredible. Goes, how would you deal with all this? I love your thinking, Georgie. And here's the thing. I did all the work for them. If you did do a tournament, hey, let's just use your own rankings, UFC. That would mean Justin Gagey's the number one seed. And look, we can't leave Michael Chandler out. Let's just make him the number eight seed. He matches up against Michael Chandler. Dustin Poirier would be your number two seed. He would match up against Paul Felder. Tony Ferguson, number three, would face Charles Oliveira at number six. And Conor McGregor and Dan Hooker, four and five. These are four matchups we haven't seen. This would be great. Now is the time to like this. We see MLB, NBA, they all kind of uh, move things around in, in their organizations, and nobody complained. People loved it. It was fresh. Now's the time to do something like this. Bring the tournaments back. Yeah, I'm 100% in agreement with you. I'm, I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Probably won't happen, though, but let's cross our fingers and see that we get something that will resolve that 155-pound division. Moving forward, another division that was affected on Saturday night is the 185-pound division. Israel Adesanya would have been a really interested spectator this past weekend as Robert Whittaker beat the man who the style bender hyped as the next contender, Jared Cannonier, in the co-main event Saturday night. Adesanya had promised Cannonier a shot at the belt if he won impressively, but Whittaker won. So what's Adesanya's next move now? Does he go for the rematch? Does he target the 205-pound title? Or is now the time to really get after that John Jones matchup. We'll put two minutes on the clock, so we'll keep it nice and snappy. George, you can lead us off. I think all three, obviously, is the answer. However, if he's going to go uh, up to another division, uh, I mean, now's the good t- now's a good time as it's getting sorted out, sorted out, and fight Jan Blahovich. Uh, if if he just thinks it's too soon for Whitaker, if he just doesn't want to do another training camp for Whitaker, I get it. Make that move now. But eventually, you're going to have to fight Whitaker, who's now 9-1, and 10-1 and as a middleweight in the UFC, a former champion. Come on. The guy's a stud. you got to give him his respect. He earned his shot back. But eventually, these two fights can lead back to him versus John Jones. Fight him in the stadium. I've said that on quite a few spinning back clicks here in Las Vegas, the Legion Stadium. It's waiting for you. That one should be the last one. And Izzy would then be the A-side. Right now, he wouldn't be the A-side, but then he'd be the A-side if he's holding two belts. What do you reckon goes? Do you think uh, he needs to stay at 85 or could he have a little play around at 205? It's so tough. I mean, look, Darren Till and Jared Kennedy are no joke. Those are two great wins for Whitaker. He deserves the rematch. But we've often seen in the UFC, people don't always get what they deserve. And I think once the beef started with Israel Adesanya and John Jones, we saw how Dana White kind of had a liking to it. You just don't want to risk that going away. And my, right now might be the perfect time to make that happen. Um, granted, there's no fans, but it's still going to be very, very big. And I, I think it's a good fight. It's one that people want to see. So I would say maybe lean that way. What do you reckon, Danny? you got about 30 seconds left, my friend. I want to see John Jones and Israel Adesanya fight, but I want to see a champion versus champion function. Obviously, John Jones is currently without a belt because he plans a move up to the heavyweight division. So... Let, let him go up to a weight class and test his luck there. Jan Blachowicz at 205 just won the belt, so I'd like to see him log in a few title defenses before we start talking about super fights. In my opinion, stay at 185. Robert Whitaker 100% deserves the rematch. He put in the work. Plus, you can say you defeated a not-so-motivated Robert Whitaker and also a very happy and motivated Robert Whitaker. And that adds a lot, obviously, as we've seen two different versions of Robert Whitaker upon his return here with Till and now Kenanier. So I'm all for that rematch, and I'm all for Israel Adesanya to stick around at 185 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if the John Jones fight is going to happen, now might be the time to do it because he hasn't bulked up for heavyweight yet. Um, if they're going to fight at 205, getting him back down from heavyweight is going to be a fair old process for him. So maybe now is the time while things are just setting themselves out at 205. But we will see. We will see. It should be uh, 
he's got options at Adesanya, that's for sure. And uh, Whitaker is a deserving, deserving contender. But this weekend, or sorry, not even this weekend, this week, Thursday night, indeed, the Bellator middleweight title is up for grabs in Uncasville in in uh, Connecticut. Welterweight champion Douglas Lima, former middleweight champion Gagob Masasi, facing off for all the marbles at 185 pounds. It is a marquee fight for Bellator. But rather than ask you who you think uh, is going to win on Thursday night, I want you to put your promoter's hat on and try and work out which winner will be best for business moving forward for Bellator MMA. Let us know who and let us know why. We'll put two more minutes on the clock for this one. Goes, you can go first. Well, one of the things that I like when I walk into a Bellator event is looking up and seeing those championship banners. And right now with Champ Champ and just vacancies, there's only a few of them up there. So really what I want is to make things a little less confusing. I think what's best for business right now is just to have your welterweight champ and your middleweight champ. And Gegard Musasi would be a great middleweight champ. And we all know Douglas Lima is a good welterweight champ. So I think that just clears things up. I, I would like that to happen if I'm a promoter. What do you reckon, Danny? Is a, is a, a two-belt champion more valuable than having two separate champions? How do you, how'd you think? I think so. I think Bellator obviously has a pretty good roster and, and they are a very, very solid promotion. But what they're missing is is having their Conor McGregor, sort of that one guy that we know uh, is the superstar of the promotion and, and, and frankly, one of the best in the way in the, in the world. And I think if Douglas Lima were to pick up the 185-pound belt, we already know he's one of the best welterweights on the planet. All of a sudden, he becomes a major, major player in mixed martial arts, not just Bellator. So I'd love to see Douglas Lima pick up that belt. And also, Gegard Musashi has talked about retirement in the past before, so I don't know how much longer he's going to stick around if he were to win a title. I think I, I think the world of Douglas Lima, and I think you know he could be a big star for the promotion, especially if he picks up a second title. So if I'm Bellator, I want Lima to become a champ champion in their promotion. Great stuff. George, you've got about 30 seconds. What do you reckon? I love the champ champs as well. You know, it's a great accomplishment. What I don't like is when they stall the division. And so I, I think Lima is very capable of, of winning the fight, you know, but I think best business is for Musasi to be the champion at middleweight, for Lima to be the champion at welterweight. However, now I'm going to contradict myself. I say Musasi moves up and challenges Nemkov at light heavyweight, leaving the middleweight belt behind. So I just think that would be pretty amazing to say, hey, this guy accomplished this under this banner. I think Musasi is huge because he speaks English. He's well-respected amongst all hardcores. Uh, and you know, they're trying to grow, grow that Europe brand Bellator is. So I think he would be a great ambassador. Yeah, that all goes down Thursday night and you'll get full coverage of that right here on MMA Junkie. That's all we've got on Spinning Backlit this week. Don't forget to keep it locked to MMA Junkie. As I say, Bellator 250 Thursday night, UFC on ESPN Plus 39 on Saturday night. Big thank you to Gorgeous George, to Goes, and to Danny Segura, but chiefly to yourselves for checking us out. Enjoy the fights this week, and we'll be back next week to talk about it all. Hey, sports fans. If you want to see more videos like this, check out some of our other ones right here. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more from USA Today Sports.